April 15, 1947, 28-year-old Jackie Robinson is up at bat for the Brooklyn Dodgers against the Boston Red Sox at Ebbets Field. Wearing number 42, Robinson helps spark a Dodgers comeback and he goes on to be named Rookie of the Year. Two seasons later, he was voted the league's most valuable player. A feat made more remarkable because Jackie Robinson was the first African-American ever to play Major League Baseball, breaking what was then known as the colour line. Black players were banned from the emerging professional baseball circuit in the late 1800s, so they formed their own Negro League. Players, crowds and stadiums remained segregated for the next 60 years. Before the Second World War, Jackie Robinson had been a star athlete at the University of California, excelling at track, basketball and football, as well as baseball. He served in America's segregated military in World War II and was court-martialed for refusing to sit at the back of the bus. In 1946, Brooklyn Dodgers general manager Branch Rickey wanted to tap into the talent of the Negro League. He interviewed Robinson to become the first black major league player, but he wasn't just interested in sporting ability. He had to know that he would be called these names and his mother would be attacked and uh, his ancestry, as I put it. Well, uh, I asked him what he would do. I'd kill him. It was a very resentment that I wanted and yet he had to realize that he must uh, be able to handle himself under those dire conditions. Robinson agreed in writing to turn the other cheek and not respond to any racist taunts he might face for three years. And face them, he did. Barred from whites only hotels the rest of the team stayed in, refused service in restaurants in the South, even some Dodgers players didn't want to play alongside a black man. But. The worst abuse came from the manager of a rival team, Philadelphia Phillies manager Ben Chapman, who hurled racist taunts at Robinson from the dugout. Chapman mentioned everything from thick lips to the supposedly extra thick Negro skull, which he said restricted brain growth to an almost animal level compared to white folk. He listed the repulsive sores and diseases he said Robbie's teammates will become infected with if they touch the towels or the combs he used. Robinson not only could not answer back under the terms of his contract, he had to endure an awkward photo op to show there were no hard feelings. Ben Chapman was perhaps the most vicious of any of the people in terms of name calling. The team members? Some members of the team, but there is a fellow by the name of Lee Hanley on that ball club that came down to first base when I was there and apologized for the Phillies. He just says, I just want you to know all of us don't feel that way, but it's been led by the manager, and many of the guys are doing it simply because of instructions, I would have to imagine. But it did give me a good feeling to know that in spite of what was coming out of the Philly dugout, one guy would come down and say he's awfully sorry. Ben Chapman later defended his remarks by saying he was just testing out Jackie Robinson like he would any rookie. Meanwhile, Robinson let his talent do the talking, fast becoming one of the top players in the game. Hit the street, Jackie Robinson, hit that ball. It went zooming across the left field wall. Yeah, boy. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball. And when he swung his bat, the crowd went wild because he knocked that ball. A solid mile, yeah boy. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball. Three months after Jackie Robinson debuted for the Dodgers, Larry Doby became the second black major leaguer with the Cleveland Indians. In August 1947, Don Bankhead pitched the first game for the Dodgers. A year later, Roy Campanella, another Dodger, became the first African-American catcher in the major league. In 1949, Robinson was called to testify before the notorious House Un-American Activities Committee, following comments from black opera singer Paul Robeson that African Americans would refuse to fight against communist Russia in the event of a war. Now, as one of America's most prominent black men, Jackie Robinson was called on to defend the patriotism of his entire race. In the event of war with Russia, Negroes and Italians and Irish and Jews and Swedes and Slavs and other Americans would act just as all these groups did in the last war. They'd do their best to keep their country out of war if unsuccessful 
that do their best to help their country win the war against Russia or any other enemy that threatened us. The following year, Jackie Robinson was back in front of the cameras, this time playing himself in a Hollywood film based on his life and career. Are you nervous? A little, maybe. But I won't be when we get on the field. Another hour and it'll begin. Would you rather I didn't go? No, you might as well come to the game. If I'm going to fall on my face, it might as well be in front of you too. The Jackie Robinson story was pure Hollywood, focusing on the feel good as he wins over teammates and fans, glossing over the racism and turning Robinson's congressional testimony into a crowning democratic achievement. Jackie, congratulations. Thank you. Same to you. By the way, Mr. Ricky, there's something bothering me about that invitation to Washington. Do you really think I should go? Yes, Jackie, I do. To Washington. To the Senate, to the House of Representatives, to the American people. You've earned the right to speak. They want you to speak. About things on your mind. About a threat to peace that's on everybody's mind, Jackie. Now you can fight back. Hollywood aside, Robinson's success on the field and poise off it had a major impact on American life. Following baseball's lead, the US military was desegregated by President Truman in 1948. And following the Supreme Court's 1954 ruling in Brown v Board of Education, school desegregation began as well, although the process would be far from fast, easy or complete. As a batter, Jackie Robinson was a new kind of player. Not a slugger of home runs like the legendary Babe Ruth, instead he played tactically. He placed the ball and sprinted around the bases. Robinson drives a hot smash at McDougal. Robinson led the Dodgers to the World Series in 1955 and retired from baseball two years later, becoming a prominent voice in the civil rights movement with a successful second career in business and banking, campaigning against drug use and founding an affordable housing company for African Americans, again confronting a colour barrier, this time in the construction industry. A lot of pressures have been applied to the different unions and, and they are opening up, but the construction people themselves are, I think, understanding their responsibility in terms of progress in this country. Just a few months after that interview, aged 53, Jackie Robinson died of a heart attack in October 1972. It would be another quarter of a century before the city of Philadelphia formally apologised to the Robinson family for the way he'd been treated by Ben Chapman and the Philly players. 1997 was also the year that the Major League formally retired Robinson's number 42 jersey. Except on April the 15th each year, now known as Jackie Robinson Day, when all Major League players wear the number 42 in his honour.